is bringing a new thing. He is giving you a new womb. You that cannot give birth, a new womb is coming to you. God is healing you and bringing a restoration. He is restoring it. That devil who took away your business, he took away your money. God is saying that he is restoring the money back to you. No, you haven't seen anything. You still believe that as long as you act on the word of God, it is working for you. Oh my goodness, it is working. The devil cannot break your heart. The devil cannot break your heart because God's word says so. When you are acting according to his word. If you are here and you want to give up in life, I came to tell you today, don't give up.
We praise your name, Father, we praise your name, great things he has done, great things he will do unto the Lord, be the glory. The great thing, great thing, the Lord He has done. Great things, great things, great things, things He will do. He will do unto the Lord. Oh, yeah. He has glory. Yeah. 
your presence. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, yeah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. My God. Everything written about you is great. Demons tremble at your presence. Demons tremble at your presence. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve.
name of the Lord. Everything, everything about our... Once again, from the International Charismatic Church, ICC New Fadama, we come to your homes to share the word of God with you. And we believe and trust God that by the time we go through the word, the Lord will transform you and give you knowledge. He will empower you and equip you to be able to rise up and deal with every problem that is unsurmountable in your life. And before I go on then, let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless your holy name. We pray, O oh Lord, that you give me utterance, you give me, Lord Jesus Christ, clarity of thoughts, and that the word of God will work in the hearts, in the spirits of that people, and bring transformation. In the name of Jesus, I declare your people blessed. Amen. Amen. How are you all doing? It's good once again to come your way. And last week I started dealing with what I call surmounting the unsurmountable. Or dealing with a very, very adverse problem in your life. We believe that with God all things are possible and God is able to deal with every problem we face. We saw from First Samuel chapter 17 verse 1 says that the enemy took the battle to the home of the children of Israel. And we learned that we should rather be aggressive, no, not defensive. If you are going to sit down for the devil to bring the battle to your home, you will suffer casualty. We saw that we are dealing with an enemy which is very aggressive and always want to attack us. We don't have physical enemies. Our enemy is a spirit. And therefore, if you allow the devil to divert your attention to human beings, you fail. God has given us everything to deal with this enemy. That enemy has power, but he doesn't have all powers. He has limited power. And therefore, you and I should be able to cause him headache, not the opposite. That the devil will be thinking of when next the enemy, I mean, we are going to attack him. As we saw last week that Jesus Christ in the synagogue, he did not even acknowledge or bother himself with the demon, but the demon rather shouted and said, what have we to do with you? And Jesus said, shut up and go. You see, that is what, how we should deal with the devil. But we occupy our minds and everything always about the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. The witch, the wizard. My enemy, my this. We are hitting on the wrong grounds. We need to acknowledge and know who the enemy is. 
and put on the armor that we will be able to stand. And if the devil doesn't have the, all the power, then why is he still winning and tormenting people? Number one, the devil tries on deception. He deceives people. If you are not vigilant, the enemy will deceive you. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and blimson. Where the beast and the false prophets are there. The devil that deceived them. And so the, in the end time, the Bible says God will cast the devil that deceived people into the hellfire. So that he will not be able to deceive people again. So the devil acts on deception. So if you don't have the knowledge about God, he will deceive you. That is why one of our weapons, as I said last week, is to be able to bring unto captivity every knowledge. That exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That is what the enemy attacks. Against the knowledge of God. Number two, the enemy thrives on ignorance. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 says, Least Satan should have advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. So if you are ignorant about his devices, he will have advantage of you. So one, he tries some deception. And he tries on ignorance. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, But I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted, just as Eve was deceived by the kinding way of the serpent. As I a kind Corinthians 4, verse 3, that somehow you are pure and undivided devotion to Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. You see, he used the cunning way to deceive Eve. The next one is that the devil tries on impersonation. He is an imposter. You see, the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has rolling lion. As rolling lion. So the devil is not a lion. Jesus is the lion of Judah. So the devil is trying to impersonate Jesus. Walking about seeking whom he may devour. Whom 
you re whom resist steadfast in faith. So the devil thrives on impersonation. He acts like who he is not. You see, that's what the devil does. Number four, the devil also uses division. Now the nine If the enemy manages to divide, he will rule. Jesus said, if a kingdom is divided against itself, it will not stand. A house divided against itself will not be able to stand. That is why the devil will do everything to bring division. And the Bible says, if a strong man is in his house, he has his goods at peace. But if the stronger than him cometh, he is able to bind him and gather his spoil. And Jesus concluded by saying, He that is not with me is against me. Now yes, who had the chat work as a near on Kamehono. And so if you are not with the master, you are against him. He that does not gather with me scatters. Therefore, we should come together and win the battle. As one family, as a, 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 a single folk of church, you see, as one body, the only way we can make it and deceive the devil is to refuse to allow him to bring division. The enemy tries on fear. In Romans chapter 8, verse 15 and 16, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You see, God himself has adopted us. He looked into all the people and chose us. That's the good of adoption. Because you see them and you selected the one you want. So God picked us from among the Lord and accepted us. And that adoption also signifies rulership. That you and I will be able to rule. And when you are lifted into that position, you have no fear. You have the confidence as a prince. Because you are able to rule. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit. That we are the children of God. Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. For God did not give us the spirit of timidity or of cowardice, or craving, clinging, and founding fear. But he has given us spirit of power and of love and of calm 
and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. That is the spirit God has given to us. You and I don't have the spirit of fear. That is why the devil comes shouting. He comes rolling. That is why Goliath came, showed up, and he was rolling. And the timid Israelites who had no identity were running away. Formerly, all the Instruments of destruction, when they come, they, they begin to make big noise to kill you before you die. So when they shoot, the sound alone will kill you. You see, that's how instruments of destruction behave. Like a bomb. Begin to explode. And the noise alone kill people. That is fear. Fear has torment. There is no fear in love. First John 4, 18. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. If the devil manages to plant fear in you, he will torment you in the rest of your life. You cannot sleep. Wherever you go, he will begin to chase after you. Because it's managed to plant fear in you. He that fear is not made perfect in love. The enemy tries in doubt. He will make you doubt. The Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. So if the devil manages to put doubt in you. He cripples your faith. And he breaks your overcoming power. The devil will make you doubt the identity of God. He will make you doubt about your own identity. And he will make you doubt about the presence of God. That is what he used to deceive Eve. If you read Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 following. The devil told Eve that hey, God, so God did God said you will not eat any of the fruit. But if so, look, we can eat everyone but just the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And that one God says, if we eat, we will die. And the devil say, you shall not surely die. Because God knows that the moment you eat, you will be like God. So one, he made them doubt about the love and the faithfulness of God. If the devil makes you doubt God's love and power, 
He has already defeated you. That is what the devil uses on men. Number two, he made them doubt about their own identity. God knows that when you eat, you be like him. A man was satisfied with his own identity. Because God has put him over all things. But the devil will let you doubt about who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, I came to tell you today that you should accept your own identity as a child of God. That is good enough for you to win the battle of life. And the devil will make you doubt the promise of God. That he will twist the word. And if he manages to let you doubt the promise, he has won the battle. He will also let you manage to let you doubt the presence of God. That God is not with you. That God is not be by you. Let me tell you, brethren, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he will also make you doubt the power of God. As if you need something else to be able to assess the power. The devil is still deceiving so many people on earth today. Trying to deceive them that they will, man, they will be able to develop themselves and become God. People have developed themselves and still they are not God. God has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything you need in this life, he has already given to you. You will be able to deceive, de- defeat the devil and overcome the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. How then do we overcome that devil? Let us read something from 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4, 14 following. Now thanks be unto God which always calls us to triumph in Christ. God always calls us to triumph in Christ. Triumph means celebration of victory. You see, when you win the battle, you come home with a triumphal procession. Like a team that wins a trophy will come with a triumphant procession. In those days when they go to battle and win, they will come home with triumphant procession. And the procession, it says that they are savor of Christ to them that are saved and to them that are being perished. They are the sweet smearing savor. You see, so those of us who are following Christ is a savor of life. 
And those, those who are of the devil is a savior of death. You must see life from that perspective. That there is greater in you who is in the I mean, greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. He has given you all the sufficiency in life. Know who you are as a child of God. That was the very thing that helped David to overcome Goliath. Immediately, he identified Goliath. He didn't see him as a, 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 a champion or a giant. But he addressed him as who he was. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Circumcision was a sign of the covenant. David had no doubt about his identity. He saw that he was part of God's covenant. He was part of God's army. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine to defile the army of God? Not until you know who you are, the devil will keep deceiving you. Some people thought David was arrogant. Especially his own brother Eliab. And David said, Look, I came here with a cause. David is a shape. I have a purpose in life. Caleb and Joshua also had the same spirit. When they saw the giants in the land, they said they are big for us to eat them. We are well able to kill them. And his brethren, the other ten said, look, we are not, we are like grasshoppers. Believe in the power of God. Believe in the promise of God. Believe in the presence of God. Know who you are. Know who your God is. And accept his presence. On the battlefield, how do we behave? You must always be motivated by reward. David said, what will they give to the one who overcome this Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? And they said, number one, he will be task free. Number two, he will marry the king's daughter. That's good enough to fight for. To deliver my family from all taxes. And to be the king's in-law. And to deliberate the people of God. So they took him to the king. And the and king said, oh, David, you're a young man. You see, this guy is an experienced soldier. And David said, when you talk about experience, I also have it. King, you know who am I? I tear lions into pieces. And I tear bears into pieces. And not in my own power. But the God who defeated the lions and the bear, that same God 
who defeat this Goliath. And the king saw that look, this guy is talking from true experience. And he has a good reference point. And the king said, Look, you can go, you can make it. You see, you should never forget your godly testimony. You should never forget the experience God has taken you through in life. And you should never forget the experience of those who trusted in God. And if you would do the same, God will turn things around for you and refuse to go in someone's armor. Make up your mind that you are going to win. You are going to stay through and win the battle. David therefore took five stones. Five stones means Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. U.S. J-U-S-U-S, no. Jesus. Jesus, that's Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. It also means faith. F-A-I-T-H. F-A-I-T-H. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, so if you put it together, faith in Jesus. G-D-A. That is your victory. And as you go in that faith, you will overcome. You will win the battle. So David said, David said, if I throw the first and he dodges, the second one will go. I am going to stay through till I win. It is not something I'm going to test and come back. I am going there to win. And the king gave him his armor. He's thinking, I've never tried this before. So let me go in my own armor. And my faith in Jesus Christ. And I know and believe that I will win the battle. I don't care about what the devil says. The battle is still the Lord. And he will win it in the name of Jesus. I want to pray with you today. If you want to accept Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord, we are going to pray. And Jesus Christ is bringing the victory. But before then, you need to accept him as your personal Savior and Lord. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the victory you've won. Oh Jesus, oh yes. today I accept you as my personal Savior. And Lord, I hand over my life to you. That you rule my life in you. Be my Lord. And be my master. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Maybe the devil is deceiving you with ignorance, with deception, with doubt. An identity crisis. I'm here to pray with you. Today, 
In the name of Jesus, let all these shackles be broken and receive the touch of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want you to join the praises and the worship team as we worship the Lord and pray. Begin to join them and God will turn things around. In Jesus' name. Me pese o ka ye ho ebra ye be sori awrade na ya tontom no ye ho na ye be wie no onyame obedane niemani amawo nyame nhira o The Lord is great He is the great I am is the great I am begin to pray Lord of seven my comes all of my body and all of my soul we are praying beloved the bible says god has given unto us everything that pertains unto godliness and life and the bible says again that great and mighty promises he has given unto us therefore we we are not people who lack anything amen Today I want us to pray and possess everything that belongs to us. For great and mighty things, great and mighty promises, and the promises of God are yea and amen. It means they are sure. They are there for your taking. They are there for your possession. Therefore we are going before the Lord and possess every, everything that belongs to us. Lift up your voice and let's pray. Yes, Lord, whatever belongs to me, I possess them this morning in the name of Jesus. I possess my health, I possess my strength, I possess my sanity, I possess whatever belongs to me in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name that is above every other name, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I possess, I possess, I possess. The Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, beloved, listen to me. God has given us great and mighty promises, which needs to be fulfilled in our lives. But there are some times that we have some hinges. There is somebody we call the devil who tries so hard to resist that which belongs to you and I. We are praying and we are attacking the camp of the enemy. Beloved, this is what I believe. If you want to take territories, you don't have to sit at one position. You need to go to your enemy's camp and possess that which belongs to you. Therefore, we are attacking the enemy. The Bible says, 
you cannot possess, go to the strong man's house, house and possess his possessions. First of all, you need to bind him. We are binding the enemy. We are destroying his works. We are destroying every hindrance he has put in place that, so that you won't be able to receive that which belongs to you. We are resisting the enemy. We are binding him. We are destroying his works in Jesus' name. Whatever word you utter today will be fulfilled in the eternity. Lift up your voice. Come on, to say Lift up your voice. Oh! 